98% of our genome does not encode genes. How do you sift through three billion bases of DNA sequence to try to find the little sequences that are important for cancer resistance? We believe we have a powerful new approach. We would identify species that have evolved superpowers that actually protect them from developing these diseases. Most of genomics research so far has focused on the minority of the genome that encodes for proteins. What other functionalities remain hidden in the rest of the genome? We're here at the University of Utah to talk to Dr. Chris Craig, who's studying this complex problem using comparative genomics. The story starts in a woman's bedroom in China. She woke up one day and she looked out onto the floor and saw there was a snake slithering along. But what was startling was that it had grown a limb with a claw, just one. And the implications of it are the genes are there in the genome to make legs. It's the switches that change non-coding regulatory regions that change. And that's why snakes and dolphins don't have legs, in part, and why people do. Why is the non-coding part of the genome important? The non-coding part of the genome is the biggest part of our genomes. And we know that what's hidden out there, billions of bases of sequence, are discrete elements whose job it is is to dial up, dial down activity of our genes. And why that's important is because they steer the activity required of our genes to shape different phenotypes. So there's are non-coding elements that are regulated by epigenetics. How do you find these areas that you're specifically looking at? We wanted to find elements that would be important for human biology and clinical phenotypes. And we wanted to find elements also that are conserved across mammals could learn general principles but the most important parts of the genome potentially because they're conserved what species do you focus on one example that uh, we focused on initially was the elephant and the elephant is the largest land mammal well these elephants they're a hundred times the size of you and i that means they have 100 times as many cells, and they live 50, 60, sometimes 70 years. That many cells in an elephant dividing decade after decade after decade, just by chance alone, one of these cells almost certainly is gonna turn into cancer. And in fact, 100% of elephants should be dying of cancer. We study children and families that develop a lot of cancer. Some of these families, the reason that they're getting so much cancer is they're missing a gene in their DNA called P53. Now, P53 is one of the most important genes protecting us from cancer. Instead of two copies of that P53 gene, elephants have evolved 40 copies of P53. We always thought that it was very likely that elephants do have additional mechanisms of cancer resistance, but we didn't really know what those were. We identified P53. We know that that's a super important tumor suppressor gene, but it seemed unlikely that that would be the only thing that was contributing to cancer resistance in elephants. We were able to obtain blood from the elephants here at the Hogel Zoo, and we would take that blood right back into the lab and start performing functional studies. We isolate blood cells out of these samples. Some of the cells are exposed to gamma radiation to induce DNA damage. Some of the cells are not. After a few hours, we harvest RNA. That RNA is cleaned up, fragmented, and turned into cDNA libraries that are sequenced to profile the expression of the genes in each sample. And then we can identify genes that increase their expression as a consequence of the gamma radiation-induced DNA damage, and we can identify the genes that decrease their expression. And this reveals to us the intrinsic DNA damage response of elephant cells. 
Now that you have all the sequences, how do you analyze the data? We start by analyzing the sequence of animals that lack the superpowers, animals that are smaller and less cancer resistant. We look for sequences that are conserved across these animals, very similar for millions and millions of years, but then are diverged significantly in the elephant relative to these other animals. We call those elephant accelerated regions. We'd like to narrow it down to regions that are associated with cancer resistance. So we looked at a data set of genes that are upregulated in the elephant when DNA is damaged in elephant cells. And we found that our accelerated regions were disproportionately near to those genes. That allowed us to define a subset of elephant accelerated regions that are actually relevant to DNA damage repair and cancer resistance. When you analyze the data, what surprises did you get? There were specific locations that were enriched we called them hotspots. The region that was the largest hotspot for elephant accelerated regions surrounds a gene called FANCIL, which was really exciting because it fit perfectly with what we were predicting to find from this analysis. FANCIL is part of the Fanconi anemia complex, which is a master regulator of DNA repair and critical for preventing cancer. Given all these results, how do you think you're going to impact healthcare? We think that by finding critical elements in the genome that can shape different phenotypes, uh, we're going to have a better understanding of the factors that shape disease risk. Will your work on epigenetics really help people also manage their health better? I think so. As we get a better understanding of how epigenetic mechanisms regulate these elements, we're going to have a better understanding of how to prevent disease.